Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show a magnetic propulsion system um, that I invented many many years ago uh, and this one came to me in a dream um, at the time I was having operations um, heavily induced on morphine and a lot of ideas used to come to me I didn't understand a lot of them and I would write a lot of these things down or you would just draw what I'd seen in my dream or um, morphine tends to put you in what's called a, a theta brainwave pattern um, which coincidentally is where most artists reside um, and so a lot of things used to come to me and I didn't know what they meant and so I'd draw them down um, write them down or whatever and now this one uh, came to me it was literally um, three rectangles and I had no idea what it meant so I, I just drew it in a book and I think it was about two weeks later I started to have ideas that maybe it was a magnetic array uh, I was doing a lot of research and a lot of experimentation with magnets and um, you know, magnetic motors and you know things like um, the cell device and um, the atoms motor was what I was working on at the time so you know my mind went straight to well is this something to do with motors or magnets um, it's hard to imagine how I come up with the concept just from three rectangles but it's sort of just evolved all on its own so I wasn't able to build this system for many years um, basically because I didn't have the equipment um, to build something the materials are, are an issue you know if you're working with wood wood tends to absorb water over time and and changes um, changes the structure um, you know I couldn't use aluminium although aluminium is non-magnetic it influences magnetic field lines with eddy currents um, which basically destroys their power or destroys the lines of force of of energy so you know, I, I couldn't use that um, also under high revolutions which this system obviously wasn't going to do um, I knew that uh, aluminium became a uh, a big uh, deterrent in, in a system for, you know, in regards to it working um, so I couldn't use that obviously you can't use steels because even a close proximity um, has an effect and just because you might not be able to visually recognize the change doesn't mean that it's not interacting um, so this system here I covered up the magnet array just so that people don't rush off and try and build it um, without understanding how it does and doesn't more importantly how it doesn't work um, so this this roller magnet um, I've eventually got uh, 3d printers and so I've placed inside this roller a ring magnet just a donut magnet um, come out of a microwave I believe it's irrelevant you can buy a new one um, and so I've printed it into this housing it has the external track there to allow it to sit into the groove that's in the actual drive track now the groove I initially used to place a magnet inside this groove and it would shoot from one end to the other it would it would literally go to one end and come back 
um, and that's when I was working on uh, using Lego to make this track before having 3D printers. Now, the magnet would never leave the track, and basically this was because of uh, equality. If there's no potential difference, there's no need for energy to move to that potential difference. So, in other words, an equal arrangement of magnets, equally placed, equal numbers, tends not to work. Or at least in my research, it, it didn't. It never worked for me. Um, the moment I accidentally discovered that um, that equal force cancels out the potential for movement. Uh, and that was, it was, like I said, accidentally done. I used to make this out of Lego and I one day set up the structure with a different sized piece of Lego. Uh, I, d I don't know how it happened still to this day, but as normal, I placed the magnet inside the um, track. It shot off to the other end and left the other end. And I was quite shocked at that because always in the past, these magnets would run the full length of track, come back, and then keep going until they eventually centered and sat in the middle of the track. Now, obviously, that's not going to work for a motor. This, I, I eventually overcame. Um, but this is still not a perpetual motion machine. Uh, this could assist um, motion by, you know, perhaps it depends on its application. But say, for example, uh, you were to have an arrangement along the side of a highway. Um, you could pull into a specific lane. If you had magnets arranged in the side of the vehicle, then this would allow that propulsion without the need for electricity. Um, and... Even if you had uh, electromagnetic coils built into the side of the vehicle, you could possibly even recharge um, while you were propelled along alongside the highway um, free of cost. So the paper on, on this track I've done literally to prevent people from rushing off and building the wrong thing. If you get this wrong, it's just hours and hours and hours of work. The whole point of me showing you this system is because I realized that uh, hanging on to this for as many years as I have, um, it's a knowledge that seems wasted to me and no one will benefit from this basically it comes down to a greed scenario again i have um sat on this because i thought one day it would make me rich um i've decided that's not my path and that there are other people who could do more with this so i'm releasing this free um hopefully the world can benefit from it in some way um so we can see that the magnet roller has um, a resistance here. And this is what they always say um, is, is what stops these magnetic propulsion systems from working or a magnet motor. This is what stops it working, is getting back through what they call the magnetic lock. And, and this is what we're experiencing here with this tendency to want to be repelled backwards. Now, they always claim that the you know, input power must be equal to or greater than. I think it's the second law of thermodynamics. It's one of them. Um, I disagree. I disagree, and, and I think this system was what pointed that out to me, that maybe what we claim might not be accurate. Um, you know, those laws were written a long time ago and 
the relevance, you know, things change. Our understanding of the world changes. And I think for us to still be using laws that are what early or oh, sorry, late 1700s, I mean, that seems just so ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, Einstein said that we couldn't go faster than the speed of light, but have a look, have a look at what we're doing at the moment uh, and the technology that we're building at the moment. You know, it, someone was wrong. I mean, US Navy patented a device, uh, what, two years ago now, that stated that clearly we can do um, you know, fast and speed of light travel through mass cancellation. If you look at one of my other videos, a bit of tongue in cheek um, video on anti gravity or anti gravity, um, as I titled it, because uh, I use this anti gravity system to um, boil my cup of tea, boil my water for my tea each morning and all through the day. Um, so you know that mass cancellation system um once you cancel mass it changes the speed that w at which you can travel um so if you have a look in that video you'll see the aluminium foil um basically levitates on the dielectric field uh, so its mass is cancelled um or at least to a significant value that it can lift up off off of um, gravity bound earth so yeah i question the thermodynamics laws and i know everyone will just be up in arms about that but the one thing that i learned from reading tesla's work is not to listen to those who say it can't be done you know that that is probably <laughs> the most if you want to learn how to do something don't ask someone who doesn't know how to do it it just seems so logic such common sense so i basically threw out their concepts of like well it can't be done and maybe it was because i was induced on morphine maybe i just you know was on morphine for too many years um and I allowed to entertain it. And when I actually saw this thing do what the physics books say can't be done, I, I was quite shocked. And then that obviously led to depression in relation to um, why are we being lied to again? Okay, so flat battery there, probably at an appropriate time. It started to waffle on. So... If we get back to magnetic system, there is resistance to enter this track. I have along here, I have four different sets of magnets. There's three magnets in each set. Um, I'll show you without, the, without removing the paper first, because I've spaced them far enough apart so that you can see a deceleration of the rotor followed by acceleration and then deacceleration and then acceleration and this is just to prove that you can re-enter the gap you can re-enter the magnetic lock that they say is what stops these things from working a critical component of this type of system is inertia and therefore the weight of this rotor is relevant as this rotor builds its own momentum by being propelled along the drive that mass requires a significant amount of force to stop it that okay that was a full hard drive that time all right so back to where it was that the mass of the roller uh, and the inertia of that roller requires a certain amount of force to bring it to a halt. If that force of the moving mass is greater than 
the force resisting it, it allows it to re-enter uh, the, the magnetic lock or, or re-gauge itself. Now, if I, if I show you um, how this rolls through each section and then uh, we can remove and we can have a closer look at each magnet. So we've got this resistance here. There is, and, that, and that's that magnetic lock at the start of the track. So you would either need to propel that in or you would need to place that in a starting position. So if we walk it up to a position where there is no force trying to move it forward, or backwards so like a, a dead zone and it's a very very small window right there okay so you know sit it there just to show you that we don't have to propel it in um, we can actually make it fall and if we imagine that between each set of magnets here it it sort of acts like a hill on the magnets uh, where the three magnets are you will find the rotor behaves as though is coming up the hill and then as it leaves each set it's as though it's rolling down a hill and I believe that this is what is responsible for the acceleration deceleration process now I can make these magnets spaced in a different way to increase the speed or increase the power relationship but at the moment they're spaced to show you that there is uh, re-gauging and that, that it can re-enter so if we just let it tip over the hill and we can see there that it almost comes to a stop but the mass allows it to roll through now if I move these magnets closer we'll have less of that stopping uh, going on so it actually increases in speed as it moves down the track up to a certain point you, you have to imagine it has a, a set velocity based on the arrangement of the magnets and uh, the relationship between the the different magnets so we can see there like an enormous struggles now I have I have um, placed on the spirit level and I can move the camera later to show you that um, that genuinely is flat I placed something under the other end in an attempt to um, make it sit flat so again we can see that relationship there of of the rotor um, using its own inertia to break the locks and and that'll continue on out uh, the other end of the track so that's clear we can now remove these um, pieces of paper and display the magnetic arrangement and part of the other reason for me covering that up is because it is just so simple um, that most people would look at it and go well that's not going to work um, so we can see here the, the convenience of the 3d printer allows me to place perfect spacing so we have five mil 10 mil 15 mil um, and then it repeats 5 10 15 5 10 15 all the way down the track you can fill every single one of these positions and and it works that way that is a big enough difference uh, and this is the emphasizes the potential to move the power that pulls the magnet backwards it decreases if you're considering that we've got 
5, 10, 15 uh, millimeter spacing as this wants to move through the track it then loses a little bit of power off the back of these magnets because of the increase in spacing so that's part of what allows it to leave the track if these magnets were evenly spaced this roller would go like this and we could probably see that here but that's basically what it would do it would go from one end of the track back again until it lost all of its momentum or inertia and would reside in in the middle of the field um, so clearly that doesn't work having this spacing um, increasing incremental increase it, it's absolutely vital to make this system work so having all those magnets flat on the table would also help so if we place it on that edge and find that sweet spot again on this side of the track magnets will be facing north in this direction um, so north in in that direction if we on the other side of the track they are facing south in that direction okay so we have two opposing fields here one track running north one track running south with this magnet this roller magnet we have north on one side south on the other side and depending on the orientation will determine the direction of travel so this system can actually go in reverse uh, even though the magnet spacing is still reversed um, it's that inequality or the incremental difference that require that uh, supplies the potential for movement um, if the spacings equal there's just no reason why would the thing need to it fights the end this end versus that end the middle is the neutral zone where it can sit without resistance so having that that different spacing is absolutely critical so now we can see that we don't actually need to supply a lot of inertia and this is where i come to question that input equal greater than blah 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 uh, so we go on the neutral zone now the tiny little amount of force needed to make this enter the system and we've already shown that it, it continues once it's within the system um, it doesn't make sense to me that this is repeated on its own if those laws of thermodynamics are correct such a tiny amount of force to the point where i can just hold it on the edge there and stop it from going so if if we consider it this way so my finger is a brake um there's no force needed for me to apply i just need to release the brake you know so that small amount of momentum is enough to allow it to enter and leave the next track so if we now we bring those magnets in we can demonstrate how they uh, can accelerate and, and different patterns will result in obviously a different outcome but it, it is such a simple system you know without a 3d printer difficult to build but the concepts are there so now that we've done that this gap here appears as though it's now too long 
Um, so the momentum gain from from this uh, section of the track is not enough to allow it to enter the next track. So that gap is is changed there, and we need to bring those in as well. We can place them probably one set away, and then that'll demonstrate that it um, requires a, a certain amount of power to re-enter the lock, but definitely does not require the same input pulse from my finger each time. So spacing is what supplies the energy. So if we go over the edge, so we can see now that that allows it to enter that set of magnets further down and pass through the mag set of magnets beyond that. However, the gap is, is now too large again. And so it exited that time. And my wife won't be happy because that's hitting her table. So there really isn't much to it and there really, you know, there's not, not a lot more I can really say. People just um, are going to have to start experimenting and playing and working things out for themselves. I really would appreciate it if you come up with something better, uh, if you let me know, because you know, I'm always messing around with this. I'm always thinking, well, is there some way to do it differently? better, faster, whatever. Um, yeah, it, it can be done on a rotary um, formation. However, you can't, you can't, th these magnet arrays cannot follow the circumference of the rotor. So you can't build that, that array in a circular fashion around the rotor. Um, many, many hours of 3D printing have taught me that that's the case. These magnetic arrays must be flat and this roller must have the ability to roll into them uh, in a sense that the, the attraction force is on this leading edge here to the magnets um, so it literally pulls it in once it's past a certain point we've still got that magnetic lock so we haven't broken any rules in relation to thermodynamics um, it's it's just a case of understanding what's required to overcome that restriction is mass and inertia um, you know so so this acts as a flywheel and its own mass is what propels it through the gate um, whereas i've seen a lot of other magnetic propulsion systems that don't don't quite make it and that would be why it's it's because their system is not including mass and inertia um, once you got that you're good to go all right well um, so if I place that there we can show that that is level so it's not a, a downhill scenario for anybody who's Oh no, you're just cheating and you're rolling it down the hill. That's clearly not the case. So if we do give it a little bit of acceleration, imagining that it was already on the way, it'll go through faster and it seems to retain a, a set speed based on, on this arrangement of magnets. So um, we get a top down view. We can see that there's 
just nothing really that special to it. It's the spacing that's critical. The distance that this magnet, this roller magnet sits up above these magnets is also critical. So the edge of, of this roller magnet would be somewhere here, just above that, that bolt and nut there that's 3D printed. Um, so, you know, in the past where I had, I had the magnet sitting inside the track, it's way too violent and it's a different um, method of propulsion. Um, it's literally more of a repelling situation where this, having this rotor sitting up above, the magnet sitting up above the actual magnetic array, seems to behave as though it's pulling and pushing. Um, we've got an attraction on this leading edge here to these magnets and then we've got the opposite as it, as it rolls through on the back side of these magnets. So again if, if we close the gap we can um, we can change that acceleration rate uh, if we move these set of magnets down as well we can get an idea of what it's like when it's completed I'm going to put that down for a second now let's see if we can arrange these it's not too easy to do one-handed and they are reasonably good magnets so they're quite strong Okay, and we're going to swap in the other set, bring it in closer. So we can see now that you can have a continual track. You could even turn this into an array in its, in its own. So you could have three sets of three and then a gap and then another three sets of three. Um, I have used hundreds of magnets in this array before across my kitchen floor and it, it'll go as um, basically as long as you make the track so part of the thing it, it, you know this this one we've proven that we can enter the field or we'll break the magnetic lock we, we, we've shown that um, we've shown that it's not a lot of inertia required um, if we are to consider having no inertia already then yeah it, it that's a considerable force to overcome but once we have supplied one impulse then the system is free to go for as long as you've created your track and again if it's in a circular fashion you do need to keep in mind so you know the perfect arrangement for this in a rotary form would be uh, quite a large rotor to allow for these tracks to remain flat um, and that they don't curve around the actual circumference of, of the motor like like a normal rotor would a normal mag uh, sorry motor would um, be close to that rotor the magnetic arrangement would be right the way around that rotor whereas this one will not work that way it must have an ability to fall and that's that's what it's doing it's the magnetic field here is pulling to this main so it's literally falling in um, and you can see the hill type relationship like this is as if it's going up over the crest and it rolls down again as it leaves it seems to simulate that slowing down procedure again if the inertia is not there
So a quick demonstration for anyone who's curious, um, will it work on you know with a larger magnet? I have to be careful with this one because it doesn't actually have a, a 3D printed guide to hold it in place, but it's the exact same principle. Uh, this rotor is just a smaller magnet. That's all it is. So this larger magnet, uh, which weighs about a kilo, um, it does exactly the same thing. So I just got to be super careful that it doesn't come off the track because it has no guide. But yeah, I mean that's that's a considerable amount of weight. Yeah, and and it's not a a good surface for it to be rolling on because but it, you can see it, it clearly has um, enough power to increase in speed okay so we can finish this up if you want to um, build yourself a rotary version from my research I believe that you have to have these magnets sitting flat on the horizontal so you imagine like a big old old style you know flour mill where the horse you know, the horse goes around the actual um, the the grinding frame so in this way here, if we placed a small curve around as opposed to you know, tipping this on its side with the rotor in this fashion in a circular motion, that is just not going to work. Um, I know because I've done it <laughs> and so it doesn't work. So keep those magnets on that flat horizontal, um, you know. I mean, sure, experiment. That's how I come up with this thing. But I can save you quite a few hours um, by adopting this um, this style in the first place, and then you can enhance on it from there. Um, yeah. So um, thanks for watching. If you have any good ideas, um, someone might be interested in please let me know uh, please like and subscribe and we share this to as many people as possible you know even if you don't actually use this as a sole magnetic drive system you could certainly incorporate this this concept to enhance speed up uh, reduce electrical cost on on other motor designs so um yeah again thanks for watching everyone have a nice day